we will open the meeting. Are we ready to go? Sure. Okay, good. All right. Um, hello, my name is Elizabeth Silver. Um, hi to our new folks. Um, I will be chairing the meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals tonight. Um, our usual chair is not here and our second chair is not here, so it falls to me. Um, so the first thing today that we need to do is open the meeting for public comment. Um, uh, Nathan, do we have anybody in the room that wants to make any comments apart from the agenda item that we have for tonight? Doesn't look like there's anyone. There is no one, but we okay. did have an email comment earlier from Philip Thurston, a uh, neighbor. Would you like me to summarize it or read the? Uh, no, the... not now. That that okay. relates to the um, actual uh, issue before mm -hmm. us tonight, and what we're doing right now just is the public comment section of the meeting, which is required by law. So now, um, without any public comment, uh, we'll move right into the meeting. So, uh, into the issue. So we're hearing tonight a special permit request by Lynn Posner Rice, who's with us, Lynn. Yes, Hello. welcome. Um, and this is to connect a garage to a dwelling, increasing the non-conforming setbacks at 48 Ridgewood Terrace, map ID 24A-030. 70. Uh, pardon me? 78, yes. Um, yeah, I did say that, maybe it got chopped off, but yes. Um, and my name is Elizabeth Silver. We have with us tonight from the zoning board, uh, Bob Riddle, who's here by phone. Can I say hi, Bob? Hello. <laughs> and uh, Maureen Scanlon. So the three of us will be hearing the appeal tonight. Mm -hmm. um, this is a request for a super, a special permit. So this requires um, a concurrence of all three members of the zoning board in order to um, affirm the request. Um, and as I understand it, the uh, standard that we're going to be using tonight is that the board must find that the further reduction in the side yard setback is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming aspect of the house. So Nathan or Carolyn jump in any time that um, I need correcting. So um, this matter has been published uh, on March 9th and March 16th. So um, who will be speaking for the appellant? Um, I can do that. Why don't you go ahead and uh, proceed and let us know. Keep in mind, we do have the materials that you submitted and um, I'm sure that we've all reviewed them. So um, please give us the, the uh, summary of what you're looking to do and the need for the request for the special permit. So the, <clears throat> the house is on a corner lot, um, Ridgewood Terrace and Blackberry Lane both of which would require the 20 foot setback in um, this zoning district. Um, and the house on Blackberry Lane sits about 18 feet from the street uh, or from its property line. And um, <clears throat> so that's already non-conforming. And we have a garage, detached garage, that is only a foot from the back line, uh, but properly located from Blackberry Lane. And we there's 10 feet between the house and this garage. Um, and the owners almost always approach the house by car and um, there's no entrance to the house on that side, they have to go all the way around back to Ridgewood Terrace to get in up a flight of stairs. So we are proposing an entrance and to get it, to make it useful as a kind of breezeway, we've attached it to the garage. We're not entering the garage from this uh, addition, but we need that space to, to get in and have the circulation. Um, and it's set back 
uh, from Blackberry Lane. It is more than 20 feet from Blackberry Lane itself, but the existing house, as I mentioned, is only 18 feet. Um, and also it's very low pitched. Um, and I think in that um, photographic overview that we presented, you can really see how minimally uh, visible it is from the street. And I think the email you got was from the neighbor who was directly across, who uh, says that it is no worse for him than, <laughs> than it was. And there's a bunch of garages actually across the street from this area. Um, so basically that, that's our uh, petition. So in connecting up the garage to the house through the breezeway, how will that change the setbacks? Well, the, it changes it because now the house is attached to the garage so that there's a, uh, I guess there's a bigger house with the non-conforming use and also now the garage, which is only one foot from the back property, um, is even less conforming than it was. We, we would need, uh, I think we would need at least 10 feet um, from the back of the garage to the property line. But our addition is 20 feet. If, you, if the garage weren't there, what we are adding is 20 feet from the back property line. Um, but anyway, the whole, it makes the conformance worse because uh, the garage, the whole house now is less conforming because it's attached to the garage also. Right. So it brings the whole structure to one feet of the line of the property yeah, line in the right. rear. Okay. But the yeah. front doesn't change and the no. side doesn't change. No. Okay. No. And there's no we, we uh, there's no construction going on in the garage itself. This is just the connection up, right? All right, correct. Okay. There's no entrance from the house into the garage and the the garage is not being changed. Okay. Um Maureen, Bob, do you have any questions? I have no questions. I, I would like clarification on and it and uh, apologies, Lynn, mm -hmm. if I just laid out of the gate, not following this as carefully as I might have in reading all the uh, paperwork you submitted. But what is the use now, and what is the use? perceived future use that might have, might be prompting this change? We're trying to get an entrance into the house. The house is pretty small and we're trying to get an entrance into the house near the garage where the owners arrive at the house. Um, and also the grade is higher there so that it becomes a more accessible entrance with fewer steps to get in from that side. Um, so we wanted a sheltered entrance with some room to hang up your coat. Um, that's what it is. So this has nothing to do with future use of more occupants or different occupancy? No, no. This is just an amenity for the owners to better Great. use the house. Great, Great. thank you. Yep. So do the owners anticipate the hope that they might down the line, and this is not something you're asking for right now, um, so we'll take this as like exactly as you've requested, but is there any intention down the line that you hope this might also be used for additional occupancy, uh, another rental unit? Uh, no, this is all, unit. this thing is like, four feet wide by 10 feet long. <laughs> right, yeah. right. But I mean, the what they're connecting it to, the garage. Oh, to the garage. Yeah. No, and we're not entering 
the garage and the garage is not suitable for anything. I see what you mean. That yeah, right. right no, right, definitely right. not. And you understand that would require additional permitting. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't have any other questions. All right. Is there any is there anything else either you want to say or the owners would like to add? Yes, I just wanted to say that we are actually um, we actually need a safer, more accessible way to get into the house because mm -hmm. uh, you know we want an entrance near the uh, near the garage or near the driveway, really. And um, we're elderly. The other ways to get into the house are you know a little. They're, they're not as good. They're, they're a little sketchy, really. We'd like to just have a safe, convenient way to get into the house. That's all it is. Got it. So now you're pulling into the driveway and walking all the way around the house to get in. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. to to the black <laughs> uh, blackberry side or to the front? That's correct. Which to the we to the to, to the, the ridge to the ridgewood. And the only thing, the only entrance on the side is has a easy. steep, uh, it has a steep, there, there is a door on the side of, of the house facing uh, Blackberry Lane, and it has a very steep staircase and a precipitous open staircase to the basement, which our grandchild has already fallen down once. Um, and he, he's young and sprightly and we're, you know, 144 <laughs> yeah. years old and planning on living in this, God willing, for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's it's safe. It's not just an amenity. It's it's actually, you know, a safety, a safety and a disability issue. Got it. OK. Um, is there anything else to add? Or questions? If not, then I would, uh, Carolyn. Oh, did you want to add something, Carolyn? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that that discussion that uh, Maureen brought up about the um, use of the garage by the current owners. So, of course, when you're evaluating special permits for zoning, it's about the land and the pro and the house on the property um, for the rest of time, not just the current owners. Um, and so your decision could be to that it you're allowing the connector to create an attached garage and the reduction is from the required 10 foot rear setback to one foot. Um, but with that, um, I would strongly recommend that the garage can only be used as storage and workshop space as an attached garage with the allowance to go closer to a setback than a house could go. Um, but that's the, um, so that that um, clarifies that the garage can't in the future be, you know, converted to a residential space in it by itself, you know, no matter who the owners might be down the, down the road. Okay. So me, might I ask Carolyn, um, would that be something we might consider setting as a condition such that the owners, the current owners or the subsequent owners could then request the ability to like, are we making, if, if we set that as a condition, which I understand is a possibility right now, would how would we phrase it? Should we want the current owners or future owners to have the ability to come back to us and ask to have that garage be turned into a uh, occupant unit, like a secondary, whatever, accessory unit? So permits can always be uh, amended or a request for an amendment can always be made. So this isn't something that's... Um, you know, codified or, you know, recorded for the right, end of time. Right. It's a special permit and it goes with a land. And so if someone down in the future wanted to modify that, they could come back to the zoning board and say, we'd like an amendment to this permit to address this condition. Okay, okay so it's not draconian. They would have to come back and ask for a uh, variance, wouldn't they? 
Um, well, they've been granted a spe they if the board grants a special permit tonight, it would you'd be granting a special permit for a reduction in the um, setback for an uh, essentially a further reduction in, a, in the setback for an attached garage. And so right. um, that then would be an amendment to that special permit. And then whatever the rules are at the time, we determine what that permit path would be in addition to the amendment. So the permit right now would not permit a residential occupancy. Well, the, uh, the, the, um, the reason for the clarification is that um, really the building, um, the city cannot, um, you know, once you attach structures, then it, we look at it as a whole and it's the entire single family home. I mean, we ah. have specific require, And so if someone comes in and says, I want an electrical permit, they can pull an electrical permit because it's within that envelope of a single family home and modifications can be made without necessarily evaluating whether or not the residential use is allowed in that space. But if you grant it as a reduction in setback for the purposes of allowing an accessory garage to be attached but closer to the lot line than what's normally required for an attached accessory garage, when we allow reductions in setbacks for accessory garages that are attached, we say you can get closer to the lot line if and only if it's used for workshop, garage, office space, but not residential. So in this way, you'd be clearly defining this space is being approved as a, um, you know, attached garage that can only be used as workshop storage, office, et cetera. And then, and, and that's, that's sort of the, the, the difference. Um, if you don't do that, then you're saying the whole thing is residential and whatever happens in the future, uh, someone can come in and expand into that space without coming back for any kind of review. Okay. Which is, uh, as I recall, <clears throat> what some of the issues were around the Maple Street property that we dealt with on the attachment and the breezeway right. there. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for Carolyn or for the appellant? All right, if not, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion we close the public hearing. I'll second that. Okay, roll call, Carolyn. Or I guess by, I'll, I'll do it by roll oh, call. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm I, so sorry, Nathan. <laughs> well, but one thing I wanna raise is we did have an email done, yes. public comment. Um, so, <laughs> so forgive me for asking this basic question, but are we, are we supposed to take the public comment first and then close this hearing, or do we take a comment after closing the hearing? I, I think we can close the hearing, and then I was planning to acknowledge that there was that one comment when we were debating this within just um, just ourselves. Um, and, and for those of you attending, not on the board, once we close the public hearing, that ends the right to comment at all and make any comments. We we deliberate among ourselves. So, um, but I, I would acknowledge that we did have the supportive letter uh, by your neighbor. So, um, yeah. yeah. And just to clarify as well that the letter was submitted, so that's officially the record. It did go to the board. So there's not a requirement that it be read to become part of the record. Right. I wasn't planning to read it. <laughs> just acknowledge it right, right. and so um, uh, you want to do the roll call yeah i'll take a roll call to close the hearing um silver yes uh, riddle yes scanlon yes thank you all unanimous okay. um we can either entertain a motion and then discuss or discuss and then entertain a motion what would, would be your preferences? Might as well have the motion. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, that we approve the special permit by Lynn Posner Rice to connect a garage to a dwelling, increasing non-conforming setbacks at 78 Ridgewood Terrace, map ID 24A-030.
and uh, as as in the uh, request, everything and according to the request. And do we want to add the limitations on the use of the garage in this? I, I think that probably makes I, some sense. I, I do. And uh, I thought that that was kind of uh, understood in the uh, request, right? But if I'm... it's not, then I want to add those restrictions. Yeah. I think it would be good to make problem. it explicit. Okay. Just to have it on okay. the record. To have them on the record as Carolyn laid it out. Okay. Um, so how would the motion the, the, finally... The building, the building is to be used only as a workspace or um, storage area and not as a um, domicile. Residential use? Residential use, no okay. residential use. Will that uh, cover the bases, Carolyn? Okay, good. Is there a and second? Before, one second. Um, before, uh, for clarification or record, when you say building, um, uh, Member Riddle, you are referring to the garage, correct? That's correct, the thank garage. You. Okay, thank you. After it's, after it's attached by the breezeway. I feel like that's uh, clear and I will second that. Is there any discussion or have we had our say? I have no discussion points. Bob? I have no discussion. I have no okay. discussion. Okay, well, I'm, I'm clear. I think we're following past precedent um, as we did on Maple Street and that we are clear about this. And I think um, it meets the standard that it's um, not only not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, but I think it's um, actually enhancing it and uh, certainly enhancing your experience in living in the house. So um, I think it's a worthwhile project here. Um, all right, so uh, roll call vote. Nathan? Actually, before that, do we have a second on the uh, Riddle's motion? I second it. Okay, thank you. All right, by roll call, uh, Silver? Yes. Riddle? Yes. And Scala? Yes. All right, it's unanimous. unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, good luck with the project. Mm. I know Ridgewood is a beautiful street. Thank you. Yeah. I always applaud our ability to expand our use of our spaces, our homes. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome you. to stick around or leave. We have a set of minutes that we need to review. Uh, from past meetings. From one past meeting, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. luck. I'm going to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very care. much, Nathan. Um, okay, so we have the minutes from the January 26th meeting. And I saw one, one typo. <laughs> I found a typo. This is my first time ever. Um, at the very the second and last paragraph on the first page, it talks about two parking pots. I no. think we want two parking spots. <laughs> yeah. Any Thank call. you. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Other than that. Um, do we have a motion on the minutes? I actually would like to have a discussion about the minutes, but I could also uh, it yeah, I could approve or make a motion to approve these minutes. It doesn't I don't I'll think it affects it. that. I'll second. Like a second. It. Okay. All right. So you wanted something to say about the minutes? Um let's let's just approve these minutes. So we're we've approved the minutes. Approved and well, seconded. Not yet. We yep. we've had a second. We haven't approved them. But if there's an issue with the minutes, then now is the time to raise it as opposed to after they've been approved. Um, it's a discussion point that I think could happen before or after, but I'd like to raise it now, um, since we could, uh, I've heard 
a couple of times recently where like applicants, uh, lawyers have questioned they couldn't go back and find the minutes, they couldn't find the videos of the meetings. And I look at these minutes and I see some points that I think are oversimplified and missed some of the, what I guess I would call nuances or negotiations or conversations within the minutes that can't quite be captured. And I wonder if there might be a value in setting up a protocol where we include links to the video of the meeting in the minutes. All right. I think that that is a conversation that's outside approval of these minutes. I agree. And that yep. maybe yep. then it probably needs to go on the agenda if we're going to have a conversation like that. So the point that brought it up was a simplification of a conversation in the this set of minutes that did not, to me, adequately represent the conversation or the uh, mm. negotiation that I, um, I could not, I did not think was like necessary to go back in and look up the meeting and follow the minutes and um, look at what did not feel like it fully represented the dialogue in the meeting. And I, maybe it's a bigger issue. And some one thing that something that does not belong in this conversation right now in terms of approving the minutes, but I looked at the point in the minutes where I posed something and the attorney came back and it, um, oversimplified or even potentially missed the point of the discourse in the meeting. And if uh, when attorneys go back and look at our minutes and they try to figure out what happened and this is all they have to go on, and then they say they can't find our recordings, easily find our recordings of the meetings. I just feel like, like we can't put everything in the minutes, but I would like to point to the fact that we record all these meetings. Well, there are legal requirements about what goes on into the minutes and it doesn't require a transcript um, right, by, right. by any, you know, reading of what the law is. Um, and um, and they do have to be recorded. And if anybody would call Carolyn, she would tell them exactly where to find them if they don't already know how to find them. Um, so I, I guess what I would suggest is that if you have a particular um, paragraph, sentences, whatever that are missing in, this, in these minutes that you would like to add, that you would propose that they be added, but that um, I, my sense of the minutes is that they actually are very comprehensive and satisfy the legal requirements of what's included in minutes. Um, and, and, um, I mean, it, it's just impossible to, unless you're going to do a transcript to, you know, capture all of that. So I, I think rather than even having a conversation about what's in the minutes that get that I, I can see sort of going off into really um, non-specific kinds of, of um, suggestions that we concentrate on any particular piece of the minutes that you find is missing and you'd like to add as opposed to you know, that larger conversation. That would that would be my take because I think that these minutes are more than adequate um, and more than a lot of other minutes I've seen. Um, but that, that's just my take. Uh, um, I don't know. 
Could, could I add something to that, if, if, that, if that would help? Yeah, please. Thank um, you. So um, you're an adjudicatory body, and the import, so, and, and as Elizabeth noted, you're required to, to identify, you know, when the meeting took place, the, um, the topic, the advertising information, who, who made comments. Um, they are to be cursory because your, your discussion is not what counts. What counts is your decision. And so the most important thing that comes out of your meetings are, is the decision and the rationale for, for making that decision and making sure that it's meeting the code requirements and the findings that you need to make in order to make that decision. And so the recording of that decision is the important piece of what comes out of the meeting. So it's not like city council or school committee that they, you know, talk back and forth a lot about subject matter and then create a policy. Um, so it is different from that in that regard. The other thing is the video recordings are not required either. Those are not legal records of the meeting. It's helpful and instructive if someone wants to go through um, to see a meeting that they missed. They are a product of Northampton Open Media and Northampton Open Media stores that, and we always tell people that. So it's outside of our ability to tell Northampton Media when to post or whether they've edited it and can post it. And sometimes, you know, we miss sending that link on to Northampton Open Media. And so, you know, we have to make sure that once we get it's best practice to make sure that once we get the recording that we send it to um, Northampton Open Media so that anybody can go to Northampton Open Media and look at those meetings if they want to. So, um, um, but then also obviously to Elizabeth's point, I will uh, say that if you feel um, as though something that you said or someone else said in the meeting isn't adequately captured in the minutes, that would be perfectly fine to suggest you know, um, an addendum or an edit of the minute time, for sure. Okay, so the recording of the meetings is not required. No. And we do this because, because? Transparency, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, should we uh, take a roll call on the uh, approval of the minutes? Nathan? Sorry, I, I mean, I, I was just thinking, uh, if uh, if uh, Maureen is very concerned about a particular uh, nuance, I mean, I, I think this would be time to, or you can send me, we don't have to approve it. I know it's the unusual practice, but you don't have to approve it now, you can send the amendments and we can uh, review the amended uh, minutes again and approve it later. That's uh, true. Correct, we could do correct that. Me, Director Carolyn, if I'm wrong, but okay. yeah, if you're really uncomfortable about uh, approving as it is, we can always uh, amend it before approving. Maureen, what would you like to do? I um, I could, based on that, I could move forward with approving the minutes, and if I go back and review the recording of the meeting and see that it capture it it recorded something that doesn't feel um like it captured the um back and forth the dialogue in the meeting i would request to go back and amend the minutes it's not a huge point it's not a it's not a huge point but there was something that was very simplified in the minutes that I thought was a uh, more involved issue and more involved dialogue that I'd like to go back and remind myself about. Okay. And right. I did not do that in advance of this. So I will apologize. So we also could mm -hmm. wait and uh, review and uh, approve the minutes at our next meeting. It's it's not. Tell you uh, what. Why don't we approve them tonight? 
and then yeah. take a look. And then if there's something else to be um, considered, then we can, you can ask Carolyn to put it on the agenda in time. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Do so. we still have Bob? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Roll call. Nobody yeah. has moved to approve well, them yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's uh, make them. You know, I please make a Bob motion. Moved and oh yeah, we moved. And, yeah, oh, and we moved and seconded. And Sorry. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so Bob moved. Maureen seconded. I I will oh, second. Okay. Yep. So by roll call, um, yes, Silver. Please. Yes. Scanner. Yes. Riddle. Yes. Okay. I think we're good. Um, next meetings, Carolyn. Um, Nathan, I right there. I believe there is oh, one in I'm April. Sorry. The first. Um, I'm oh, so sorry, meeting. Nathan. It's just okay. habit. Well, it's yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there there is um uh, um April thirteenth hearing and um details you provided, but in general, it's about a a home business uh with uh, non resident employees. In okay. also some some details are kind of got raised uh during the review uh about potential um. Uh, there being more activity than specified possibly and some details that need to be clarified. So that's uh that's the that'll be the um the current item. That'll be the item on the next April 13th hearing Very at 5 30. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And um thank you. I loved your uh Please. the notice to us with all the information and the standard. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, we look forward nice, to your support. Nice thank you, Nathan. What nice Bob? Seeing your voices and it's nice seeing your voices <laughs> and hearing your faces. So. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? I will move. I make a motion. We adjourn. Okay, I second. <laughs> You're a one man show tonight, Bob. <laughs> All right. Okay. Roll call. Yep. By roll call. Um, Silver. Yes. Scanlon. Yes. Riddle. Uh, yes. Uh, great. All right.